You know, the medium in which I work is, I, I would describe it as simulation. And uh, I guess the term simulation is only really emerging in, in art now. Because I was kind of interested in the subject of, of electricity, and particularly the relationship between electricity and, I suppose, uh, the preservation of life, you know, through sort of medical endeavor. Uh, this particular illustration, which relates to dead frogs, which are then sort of reanimated using this, this historic method of galvanic reanimation, struck me as, you know, something I should pay attention to. The idea of sort of electrical currents flowing through nerves was a complete unknown at that time. So I thought it was interesting to maybe recreate the experiment using 3D portraits, virtual portraits of you know live simulation, which recreated the, um, the experiments. And you could also bring in these wonderful hands, which were sort of dangling. But I suppose as part of that process, I started to ask, you know, which frog would I use now in this experiment if we were to recreate it? And quickly came across this candidate called the African clawed frog, uh, the Exlavus African clawed frog. And the African clawed frog, one of the kind of fourth or fifth uh, headings on its Wikipedia entry was that it was the very first vertebrate to reproduce in zero gravity in outer space. And so this frog is brought to outer space where it successfully produces a live offspring. So a very quick Google turned up this video from, from um, what, what was known as a space lab in which a scientist grapples with one of these frogs that has been brought to space, to zero gravity, to, to test this, if it can reproduce. The frog actually kicks free and tumbles in, in zero gravity, and the, the, the scientist struggles to regain control. What fascinated me about that footage was that you've got this funny intersection with the scientist between caring for the frog, in a sense, because it's an experiment, it's, it's a valuable part of this experiment but also a kind of an aggression in a way, because it's trying to trap it again and control it. It points to this much longer history of intersections and interactions between animals and humans. So, you know, you've got an etching here from 1792, uh, which communicated something uh, to me. Then you've got a kind of piece of YouTube video from 1992, which also communicated something to me. And I suppose in the end, the work mashes these things together into one artwork. Here today, um, we are working with um, a dancer, Esther Balf, and she will manifest the, the missing scientist. And that scientist is only present through the actions of her hands. So she will manifest these actions, and we will motion capture it using this studio. I would think of this as a, a site of three-dimensional cinema here in that any action that occurs here, as long as it's properly spotted, will be recorded both in time and in space, and also not as image, but as fundamentally as information. So, you know, if I move my hand like this, it becomes a stream of data from a series of points about where it is in time and in space. Number four, and number five. So that's fine, just a little bit further apart. Okay, that's fine. Shoot. Exposition is two in five, four, three, two, one. And shot. Because we're making simulation engine-based works, you have these very distinct roles. Um, you've got a role for a coder or a programmer. 
definitely a major role for a modeler. And maybe just turn it a little bit so we can just see these things along the back. Yeah, these are very, very distinct skill sets in a way, each one. The modeler is particularly important in this project because we need these beautiful hands to be represented. And then, of course, the frog, who is, we call it sort of frog Jesus, that's sort of hanging, crucified in the middle of the scene in a very formal sense. I'm very, very ambitious aesthetically for this work. You know, I want to create what I call an image object or a kind of sculptural photograph, which has this very, very sort of sharp resolution, you know, that it is a very compelling representation of a, a, a sort of a lost scene, a historical scene. The final piece, the Exlavis artwork, hovers between life and death in that you've got a frog suspended outside of the sort of vessel of life which is earth and yet is kind of full of life you know occasionally manifesting these kind of galvanic reanimations these kicks and these quite sterile sort of scientific kind of hands both kind of frame the frog they sort of protect it and, and, and present it and also sort of threaten it you know that kind of interplay between the human world and the natural world which is often entirely self-serving.